Hey, good morning. It's Councillor Glenn Gower. I am on the Trans Canada Trail just east of Robert Grant Avenue. Uh, there's a reason why I'm here. I'll talk about that in a sec. A whole bunch of reasons I'm here. Um, wanted to start though today. It is May 1st, believe it or not, even with snow on the ground and a chill in the air. It is May 1st, which means it is First Responders Day. So I want to say thank you to first responders in Ottawa and in our Stittsville community. I know we have a lot of first responders who live out here. Police, fire, paramedics, bylaw, thank you. Uh, you put your safety on the line every day for us and we thank you for that on First Responders Day. Okay, I've got a lot of updates today, so I'll jump right in. Why am I here on the Trans Canada Trail near Robert Grant? A whole bunch of reasons. First of all, um, I want to give a reminder about uh, courtesy for when we're using pathways as walkers, as dog walkers, as cyclists. Uh, just please be courteous and thoughtful about the people around you. If you are a cyclist, remember that it's the law that you have a, a bell on your bike and it's always helpful when you use that bell to signal when you're passing people. Uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of people using these trails and pathways in our neighborhood now, which is great, uh, but it also means we have to step up our courtesy towards others when we're on the trail. So share the path and uh, cyclists, please make sure you're using your bell when you're passing people. Uh, the other reason I'm here is to uh, remind you about our search for missing pedestrian and cycling links in Stittsville. So we want to know where, where should we have a sidewalk or a recreation path that would make your life more convenient, that would make your walk or your cycle safer, you can go to my website, glengower.ca. You can see all the information there. You can send me an email, um, glenn.gower at ottawa.ca. You can also attend a meeting that we're holding on May 11th. I'm partnering up with my council colleagues, Jenna Suds, Alan Hoobley, and Eli El Shantiri. We are the councillors for the West End Wards, and we're doing a bit of a Q&A information session about how the city is, is planning and investing in fixing some of these missing links. So thanks to everybody who sent suggestions so far. We've had uh, dozens of suggestions, which is great. So keep them coming in. Where are the missing links uh, for sidewalks and pathways in Stittsville? Um, the other reason I wanted to come here on the Trans-Canada Trail near Robert Grant today was uh, about vaccines. So we're not too far from the boundary of the K2V postal code. It includes part of the northeast part of the Fernbank neighborhood near Terry Fox and around where the Sobeys is and everything. If you're in the K2V postal code, you are in a provincial hotspot community. And that means if you're 45 years of age or older, you can now use the provincial booking hotline or the provincial website, Ontario.ca, to book a vaccine appointment, which is good news. Now, some other age categories, this gets really confusing and, and it's one of the problems with vaccine rollouts, but I will, I will refrain from ranting too much. So 45 years and up if you are in the hotspot K2V postal code. If you are 55 years or older, you're now eligible to go to Ontario.ca or call the provincial 1-800 number to, to register for an appointment. And if you are 40 years or older, you can call a local pharmacy and get an appointment there. I have information about this on my website. I will not try to explain the all the conditions, all the eligibility here. Um, there's there's different eligibility as well for different uh, uh, groups of people who've been deemed to be eligible, whether it's uh, essential workers like childcare workers or whether it's people with certain illnesses, healthcare workers and so on. So go to my website, glengower.ca, and you'll see some information there about vaccine availability or go to ontario.ca or go to ottawapublichealth.ca. All really good resources. On vaccines, um, I couldn't believe this number when I, I looked at it this morning, but I checked and I double checked. It's really good number. Um, in Ottawa, 322,000 adults have received at least a first dose of the vaccine. That is 37% of Ottawa's population ages 16 and up. So over 322,000 vaccines. That's a lot of progress even since I gave this update last week. So as long as those vaccines are, are coming in, uh, this is uh, really good news and can continue over the next few weeks. Another reason why I'm here today on uh, the Trans-Canada Trail near Robert Grant Avenue is uh, to talk about some of the recent development applications. On Thursday, we did a development meeting about a property known as 723 Putney, which is just across Robert Grant over there. I can see it from here. Uh, so thank you to residents who attended that and asked questions. I've posted a video of that meeting on my YouTube channel, so you can search for Councillor Glenn on YouTube. I also posted a video from the meeting we did on Tuesday about 1837 Maple Grove. That's the property on Maple Grove with, with the two 
uh, 19th century stone buildings on the site. Those are going to be retained as part of Madame's proposal. So you, you can watch that video on my YouTube channel. And uh, we had two new, well, not, they're not new development applications, they're revisions or updates to development applications. So what happens is uh, usually a developer will submit version one of their plans, and then there's a period where uh, the public can comment, I can comment as a counselor, and other stakeholders like um, Hydro or Police and Fire or the city Stormwater Group, they all comment and evaluate these proposals. And then the developer comes back with revision number two. Sometimes there's some small tweaks, sometimes there's some major tweaks. We got two revisions back this week that folks might be interested in. Uh, one is for 1919 Maple Grove. It's a, a townhome development and uh, in the final phase would be a low rise apartment, I believe four stories. The other revision we got was for 1518 Stittsville Main Street. This is the property across from Quitters, also along the Trans-Canada Trail. And uh, it's the, the station development development if you remember that one. I haven't updated my website yet because I haven't even had a chance to look over the documents. They came in very late last week so I'll be updating that this week but uh, I think you can get them on the city's dev app site for those of you who are familiar with that. There's another reason I'm here on the Trans Canada Trail near Robert Grant Avenue in Abbott Street right next to me. It's to uh, remind me to tell you about Operation Noisemaker. This is a, um, a focused enforcement campaign by the Ottawa police focused on speeding, stunt driving, um, very loud engines. And I know that Robert Grant and Abbott Street have been problem spots in the past and they still are. Uh, roads like Hazel Dean Road, Carp Road. Uh, so the city, set, uh, city police are out there and they are handing out tickets to people who are speeding and racing on our streets. I need you to do something. If you have concerns about this, if, if this is something that bothers you or that uh, uh, you're concerned about, go to ottawapolice.ca slash report and you can submit a report about unsafe driving. Um, police are, are very well aware of the problem streets in our neighborhood because I mention it to them quite often. But what they always tell me is to encourage residents to report this because they use that data um, to focus their additional enforcement activities. And they are out there in April. They handed out thousands of, uh, thousands of tickets for people speeding on our streets as well. So please slow down and keep our community safe. Very busy path this morning. <laughs> uh, some other updates. If you know a high school, a young woman in high school, who would be interested in an event to be organized by Equal Voice, it's called She Governs, we are setting up a mock council meeting on May 15th uh, for young women to participate, uh, get to learn a bit about municipal politics and about uh, what it's like to be an elected official and really to encourage young women to get involved in public life. So it's called She Governs. It's on Saturday, May 15th. We're looking for one young woman from our ward who'd want to participate in this mock council session. This is mock council as in like simulated council, not making fun of council. Thank you. Uh, if you uh, know a young woman who would be interested, please send me an email, glenn.gower at ottawa.ca. Really need to find uh, someone uh, by this weekend. It's a very short, short deadline. So uh, please encourage encourage uh, anyone you know to get in touch with me about that. Uh, you may have seen some new traffic calming going on up on your street. We have uh, traffic calming being deployed for the spring. I put a post on my website, glengower.ca, about some of the new streets that we're adding on. Let me see if I can remember. Uh, we have some new traffic calming or updated traffic calming on Granite Ridge, on Hartsmere, on Westridge, on Orville, on Kimpton, on Kittawake, on Sweetenham and on Springbrook are the major ones. We've tried to focus on um, mostly on, on collector or minor collector roads. So these are the roads that have a higher volume of traffic. Many of them are near schools and parks. Um, and we've added mostly these flex stakes. There's a few of those radar speed boards as well. What the flex stakes do is they narrow the roadway and they force drivers to slow down. And uh, I, know, uh, I know they're not everybody's favorite method of traffic calming, but they do bring speeds down by five to 10 kilometers per hour, which is significant. It means that we have traffic on our local streets going, you know, more like 40 kilometers an hour than 50 and up. And that makes a really big difference. Should there ever be a collision, the chance of survival with a vehicle going 30 or 40 kilometers an hour is much, much higher than any vehicle going faster than that. So we need to encourage uh, lower speeds on our streets and flex stakes are a really cost effective way to do that. 
Uh, we got some funding from the federal government, a federal government funding announcement for uh, parks in Ottawa uh, to improve accessibility. In Stittsville, uh, sorry, uh, I'll go back a sec. Every ward in Ottawa, every municipal ward, uh, basically one park will be updated with this federal funding over the next three years. In Stittsville, the park is Ralph Street Park. It's one of the older parks, uh, playgrounds in Stittsville. Really it needs some, of, of some accessibility enhancements. Uh, so sometime in the next uh, three years, that park will be uh, uh, updated with thanks from the federal funding. It's a good thing. Yesterday was the deadline for our Stittsville Volunteer Awards. We've had lots of great nominations. I'll tell you something though, uh, if you miss the deadline of yesterday, please feel free to uh, uh, submit your nomination over the weekend. We will not reject it just because it's a little bit late. And the final thing that I wanted to mention today is on Tuesday evening, I'm doing a counselor chat. It's gonna be a bit like these Saturday morning videos, except it'll be one hour and it'll be interactive, kind of like a call-in radio show. We'll be doing it live on Zoom and on Facebook. And uh, it'll be a chance over that hour to ask a question. You can ask me anything you want about local issues, whether it's about uh, COVID and vaccines, whether it's about local development, whether it's about traffic calming and speeding or, or anything that you've always wanted to uh, find out or ask me about, this will be the chance on Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, I might do it outdoors if it's a little warmer and less windy, we'll see. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Um, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you get a chance to 